Peace and welcome to Atlantis Build Talk Radio, the premier station for 5% of Nation of Gods and Earth social commentary, interviews, musicology, and uncensored discussions about the science of everything in life. This station is a subsidiary of Asia and the Atlantis School for Gifted Youngsters at www.atlantisschool.blogspot.com and Asia TV at YouTube slash Quinaya. Q-U-A-N-A-A-H. Peace and welcome to another edition of Atlantis Build Talk Radio. I'm your host, Saladin Allah. And in today's episode, I wanted to follow up on a question that I received via email from one of my listening audience members that wanted me to expound on a couple of degrees and I won the 40s and to show the correlation in those two lessons. Uh, Those two degrees are the eighth degree and the 13th degree in the one of 40s. Um, The eighth degree asked the question, what makes rain, hail, snow and earthquakes? And the 13th degree asked the question, but brings rain, hail, snow, and earthquakes. So they're two different degrees. The two answers are different, but what's similar, what's common about those degrees and what they share is this idea of rain, hail, snow, and earthquakes. So today I wanted to elaborate a little bit on the correlation between those two degrees. Now the build degree or the eighth degree, again, it asks the question, What makes rain, hail, snow, and earthquakes? And the answer is, the earth is approximately covered underwater approximately three-fourths of its surface. The sun and moon have an attractive power on our planet while it's traveling at a terrific speed of 1,037 and a third miles per hour on its way around the sun. The sun draws its water up into the earth's rotation, which is called gravitation, in a fine mist with the naked eye can hardly detect. As this mist ascends higher and increases with other forms of mist in a different current of the atmosphere, she then becomes heavier than gravitation, then distills back to the planet in the form of drops of water or drops of ice, depending on how heavy the mist was and which current of the air it was in. There are some layers of currents real cold and warm, others very swift and changeable. When this mist strikes a cold current, it becomes solid ice and small round drops and forms or in a light fluffy form, which is called snow. This water is never drawn above six miles from the Earth's surface by the sun and the moon. The reason that it rains back onto our planet is because this water cannot get out of the Earth's atmosphere with its high speed of rotating makes it impossible. Earthquakes are caused by the Son of Man experimenting with high explosives. In fact, all the above is caused by the Son of Man. The knowledge understanding degree or the 13th degree in the 1 to 40s asks the question, but brings rain, hail, snow, and earthquakes. The answer says they continue daily to teach the 85% that all they see and hear, such as rain, hail, snow, and earthquakes, comes from some mystery God that no one will be able to see until they die. This is believed by the 85%. The 10% knows when man dies, he will never come back to tell the living whether he lied or not, because the dead is never known to return from the grave. In all the history of Islam, it's never revealed anyone coming back from a physical death, but there is a chance for mental death because the lost found was once mentally dead and many of them recovered from it. But they were not dead physically. They were only dead mentally. So when you're looking at those two lessons, one of the things that's important to keep in mind is that they're both talking about atmosphere or weather. In fact, they're talking about primarily The water cycle, evaporation, condensation, and precipitation. Water being drawn up into a fine mist, it being too heavy, so it condenses and then eventually distills back to the planet. That is physically the water cycle. So when you look at the planet, the planet has an atmosphere to it. As human beings, we also have an atmosphere. When you look at that build degree, it talks about the earth being approximately covered under water three-fourths of its surface. Our physical body is also three-fourths water. The same exact way that this planet earth has an atmosphere, we have an emotional atmosphere. The same way that this fine mist is drawn up into the earth's atmosphere and then becomes heavier than gravitation and distills back into the planet, 
we go through the exact same thing mentally and emotionally. Think about times that you've pondered something and it was so heavy on your mind until you eventually acted upon what was heavy on your mind. You thought about it so much that it became such a weight to you that you ultimately manifested some form of action based upon that thought because that thought was drawn up eventually became condensed with other thoughts or ideas that you entertained and then it distilled in the form of an action that's the exact same thing that happens with the water cycle this mist is drawn up into the atmosphere and becomes heavier than gravitation then distills in the form we do the exact same thing when we think certain ideas and eventually they distill in the form. Rain is symbolic to sadness. Hell is symbolic to anger. Snow is symbolic to indifference. And we all know what an earthquake actually is. That doesn't need any type of explanation. So in this bill degree, one of the things that it also talks about is how this water is not drawn above six miles from the Earth's surface by the sun and the moon. The sun and the moon symbolizes the two hemispheres of the brain that acts as a conduit for our consciousness or repository of the mind. When we think, that synapse in our brain is connected to our central nervous system, which is linked to our physical form, which includes our parasympathetic nervous system and all of our organs which regulate our body fluids, a.k.a. three-fourths water. This is the connection between what we think and what we sense in terms of what we see, smell, taste, touch, and what we hear. In a sensory perspective, how we attend this world is then again rerouted to our brain through our central nervous system and reinterpreted. That water cycle, which takes place externally, symbolically takes place internally as well. That's why it's very important to guard our thoughts, because every thought that we entertain eventually is drawn up into a fine mist, increased with other forms of thoughts or fine mist in different currents of the atmosphere. Depending upon the weight of that thought, how much we ponder, how many other ideas that we combine with that thought is going to determine if it distills in the form. Think about something that you desired and eventually obtained. How much thought you actually put into that. How many scenarios that you envisioned around what you desired. And over a period of time, it eventually distilled in the form or you made it manifest. This degree also states that this water is never drawn above six miles from the Earth's surface and that it cannot get out of the Earth's atmosphere because of its high speed of rotating, making it impossible. That fine mist that I spoke about earlier or that mind or that consciousness is undetected by the naked eye. It's intangible intelligence. Water is tangible. It's something that you can observe. It's within the realm of the senses. The same thing with hail as well as snow. That fine mist that the naked eye can hardly detect, it is above the atmosphere. It is above the physicality or the form. When we are in our emotions, we are in the form, meaning the mind does not rise above that form if we are in our emotions. The gravitational pull of the senses makes us to still back in that form of either sadness, anger, or indifference. And if we're really out of control, we cause earthquakes. <laughs> That is one of the reasons why we've always practiced various different techniques such as fasting, meditation, yoga, martial arts, all of these and other various different techniques or forms that disciplines the mind to rise above the matter. For us to be able to learn self-regulation because we understood over time and through trial and error 
that this water does not rise above six miles from the Earth's surface. It does not rise above the form when we are in our emotions. So we had to learn forms of emotional intelligence, ways to discipline ourselves so that we can master the matter with mind. Now, this is all in the bill degree. When you get to the knowledge understanding degree of the 13th degree, it says, but brings rain, hail, snow, and earthquakes. We just discuss what makes it. It's the mind. It's the consciousness. And we have to be disciplined enough to master the matter with mind. The knowledge understanding degree says, but brings rain, hail, snow, and earthquakes. So in other words, but means in addition to or aside from. But is also seen as an excuse. What it does is it nullifies the statement that you made prior to that. That would be like one of my sixth grade students saying, oh, I was going to do my homework, but I ended up going outside and hanging out with my friends. You just nullified the fact that you were supposed to do your homework. So but can also be seen as an excuse. But in this context, we're talking about but in the form of in addition to or aside from. So in other words, yeah, we know what makes rain, hail, snow, and earthquakes. Yet aside from that, but brings rain, hail, snow, and earthquakes. Making something is entirely different than bringing it. The first segment of that degree, the knowledge understanding degree, says they continue daily to teach the 85% that all they see and hear, such as rain, hail, snow, and earthquakes, comes from some mystery God that no one will be able to see until they die. This is believed by the 85 percent. So right there, what it's telling you is you have a segment of the population that invests resources 25 hours a day and eight days a week to make people believe that they have no control over not only their own atmosphere in a sensory perspective, but they have no control over the atmosphere that they witness externally. They're just subject to what's going on outside of them and they're subject to what's going on inside of them. And a part of this propaganda or this indoctrination or the programming that takes place 25 hours a day and eight days a week is the emphasis on people have no control. So instead of people learning some of the classical or indigenous traditions of fasting and martial arts or yoga or meditation. People just go to a doctor and they prescribe them a pill so that they can be put into a chemical straitjacket. Or you have scientists studying epigenetics where certain things can be turned on or off inside of you because you just ain't got no control. You have no ability to master the matter. You are totally subjected to everything that's happening outside of you and everything that is being programmed to happen inside of you. So we're constantly being bombarded with this propaganda and we're constantly being subjected to this notion that we are not masters of our own destiny. That any kind of ideas that we have, no matter how high we think about ourselves or about anything else in terms of a goal or a vision, it's eventually going to combine with other different ideas that becomes too heavier for gravitation and distill right back in the form of failure. People go through it every single day. They have a great idea. And the more they think about the idea and they come up with other different ideas and they're very excited and optimistic about it. And they start having conversations with other people that have no vision or sharing these ideas with other people that as it's missed, ascends higher and increases with other forms of mist in a different current of the atmosphere, people thinking differently, it then becomes heavier than gravitation, then distills back in the form of drops of water or drops of ice, depending on how heavy the mist was and which current of the air it was in. So either you're going to be crying or you're going to be mad. This is a constant process that we go through every single day. 25 hours a day, eight days a week. And this is believed by most people. But the people who are sitting back pulling the strings, they don't believe in none of this because they have some level of success here on Earth. 
but yet other people believe that they're going to get theirs after they die. Now, the irony of this is this is the knowledge, understanding degree. It's the 13th degree. The 13th letter in our alphabet is M, which represents master. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Self-mastery. And self-mastery happens through our culture. One and three equals four, the same way that knowledge and understanding manifests culture, our way of life. So our way of life, all of our people activities are constantly being bombarded with this propaganda that we have no ability to master our own destiny. We have no sense of self-control over anything that's happening outside of us, nor do we have any control over what is happening inside of us. That is one of the reasons that the 85% are defined as a slave of mental death and power. Because if we have no control over what's going on outside of us or inside of us, we have no power. That's symbolic to a mental death. That is also why in this knowledge and understanding degree is that it says in all the history of Islam, it never revealed anyone coming back from a physical death. But there is a chance for mental death because a lost found was once mentally dead and many of them recover from it. So our witness is recovery. We've seen others who came before us who have recovered from a mental death and power. So we know it's possible, which also means in order for us to stay on our square or to stay true to our culture or our way of life, we also have to be aware that we're going to constantly be tested and bombarded with propaganda and indoctrination 25 hours a day and eight days a week. If the 10% continue daily to teach, we have to continue daily to teach also. So when you look at the relationship between these two degrees, the build degree, dealing with what makes rain, hail, snow, and earthquakes, and we're looking at the water cycle externally, but also symbolically what happens within us, Emotional intelligence. The knowledge understanding degree puts it in context of a society. What happens when we don't have that emotional intelligence? When we don't realize what's happening outside of us or inside of us, we're subject to being mastered and taught to be other than ourselves. So when you take knowledge and understanding all the way back to the knowledge understanding degree in the 1 to 36, it asks the question, what is his own self? which also means what is her own self. We gotta ask that fundamental question. This journey of knowledge of self requires us to be consistently dedicated to growth and development because the 10% teaches daily that all we see and hear comes from something outside of us. So what that also implies is that at a very early age, a part of the wrong fools that we've been taught is the blame game where we're taught to not take responsibility for our own destiny. That doesn't mean that we don't hold others accountable for being distractions or striving to undermine the things that we're doing. When we believe or think that something is happening outside of us, then that gives us an excuse in terms of not taking responsibility. We can play to blame somebody else game. We see it all of the time with people who are very religious. The devil did it. Just Thursday, the news came out about a mass grave of 215 indigenous children that were found on the grounds of a Catholic residential boarding school in British Columbia. Some people will look at that and say the devil did it and not put an actual face to the people who were responsible for that type of atrocity. So that is also the danger with worshiping a mystery God, that even the devil don't have a face if God doesn't. So there's no accountability for people, places, and things. Ultimately, it's either some mysterious entity that caused good to happen or some mysterious entity that caused bad to happen. It's never us. So I will that this brief elaboration on how those degrees correlate was inspiring, it was empowering, it was educational. And my brother who reached out to me, I, I will that this gave you some more clarity on how I'm looking at those degrees and how they relate to our everyday life. Again, for those of you who want me to expound on any other different degrees, don't hesitate to send me an email at atlantisbuild at gmail.com. Also, 
Don't forget to support my Atlantis School for Gifted Youngsters renovation project. I put it in the description of this episode. Support is definitely appreciated, and I'll build with you again soon. Peace. Yeah. Yeah. This is fire. Fire in the hole. Yeah, Mark. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. Yeah. Yo. You'll peep my story through a looking glass. My words surpass a class in music. I see prophets betrayed by Judas. Give up the blueprints you sent for the foolish. Branching weapons of contraception. It'll all perception in four directions. Deceive the soul I hold like black gold. We out of control on blocks. Cats gunned down in front of corner stores and barber shops. No different than Vicky and Tupac. The world stops to watch them. Yo, I spoke to Malcolm and they shot him. I spoke to the Martin and they shot him. In cities similar to Sodom, I see strange fruit. Bearing guns from the roof. Snipers shoot. But I seek the truth in the chaos of God's order. I flee to see the Canadian border. But if you ask me, the fifth prophet fulfilled prophecy so the seas can breathe and shed light across the seas. Cause we like dream catchers and they glad they met us. We dream catchers and they glad they met us. Yeah, cause you know I got to rock this track for you. Cause you know I will. We dream catchers. Yeah, we dream catchers. We dream catchers. Yeah. I was betrayed by a kiss on Black Sabbath. I walked through Nazareth, a carpenter. They played the monitor, a prophet whose skin's darker than what they witnessed. And raven images raised from Kimmich among Masons, Atlanteans with faces like Haitians. I remember places where books was taken. African, Dominican, Jamaican. My patient grows thin. Venomous snakes, they walk with men. Cain, if you're listening, I rose again a musician. In a white robe, we strolled through trials of Job. Bearing a black rose, I'm froze. Seeing the future in my presence. We Dream catchers, uncivil letters, they glad they met us. The chosen walk with us and talk with us. Yeah. Dream catchers. I got to see. Rock this track for you. Cause you know I will. Dream catchers. Yeah. We dream catchers. We dream catchers. We dream catchers. Please support and share with your networks our Atlantis School Renovation Project. Through a recently acquired property here in the city of Niagara Falls, New York, we are doing renovations to establish an early childhood learning center and after school program for youth in our city. Despite students of color representing more than half the student population in this country, black men represent less than 2% of that teacher workforce. So as a black educator, my voice and presence within the lives of children is critical to combating family dysfunction, juvenile delinquency, and creating an inclusive workforce that ensures that all of our nation's students receive a quality, culturally enriched education, which consists of various projects, programs, and initiatives such as this cool animation series. This is not simply my profession. It is also my passion and my purpose. We would really appreciate your support and sharing this initiative with your networks. Thank you. <laughs>